Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.90 BFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our cousin Swambat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I am the Wombat. Ooh, ooh, the visuals are awesome. <laughs> I think some of his muscles there. <laughs> Comes and, over on radio very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we have Greg Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Welcome. And John Richards from England, south of London. Welcome. Hello. Digital, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, Satanism, Pastafarianism, et al. Also, we cover the sciences and religion and religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. If you think you're the only non believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 11, well, a thousand of us, almost 1,100. Uh, we're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid show break. So be sure to stick around. Well, Beth, what's our topic today? Today, we are going to talk about charity. And I think it's an interesting topic because I just went through a, a charity experience extravaganza that I love to go into. But before we go into that main course for today's show, let's throw up to some pasta and noodles with our own weekly invocation brought to you by our own Dread Pirate Hicks. All right. Our noodly lord, <clears throat> who art in the colander, al dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, mm. as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whatever and ever. Raw man. All right, so here's the weird thing. I did go to a charity thing. It was a food drive. We we, we prepared over 2,000 meals for a bunch of homeless people. I was bagging 480 bags of grocery foods, and we were giving them to the, all of these trucks. It was a whole event, but it was largely run by three main churches that are uh, fairly large churches in our immediate area. But I had no problem going as an atheist to be able to volunteer and help out. I looked at their website, and they said, we're here to help hungry families and souls. And I was like, eh, I'm here for the hungry families, but it's all good either way. It's all good either way. And I was thinking uh, there was a really interesting event that happened when we're, we're done bagging up the, the, the groceries. We, we are ready to give them out to the homeless people who are waiting in line. And then the pastor is like, okay, everybody gather around. We're all going to listen to me now because we're going to do a prayer first. And I'm like, they're still hungry in line. Are we really going to do this? I'm the, I didn't do it. I abstained. I walked on the outside. <laughs> But he's doing his whole prayer of, um, I just want to thank everybody for being out here. Listen, there's a lot of different people out here. If you look around, there's a lot of different demographics. And I think that's so great that we all value community first. I just want to make that front and clear. Regardless of whoever you are or wherever you come from, we all came here together because we all have one fundamental understanding, and that is Jesus paid a price for our sins. <laughs> <laughs> and he went off the rails. <laughs> Can I get an amen? And then I was like, amen. 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 Yeah. and I was like, you were so close to something where I was like, oh, my head was turning around and being like, oh, maybe this is like actually pretty good. It was like, no, it was just no. that. And then it was the most rote. Uh, go ahead, John Richards. Go ahead. Well, you said something right at the beginning of this little piece where I was puzzled because you said you were. At, you were giving out food. I, I don't know whether it was a food bank or, or what, but uh, we have them in this country now, thanks to the incompetence of our government. But you were giving out food to hungry people and souls. So can you tell me what do souls eat? True, true. We found <laughs> there was a lot of food and there was a couple of succulents. There was a bunch of succulents. So maybe that was for the souls. They were giving out potted plants. <laughs> as well with the food and it was good food too it was like you know regular grocery food we're backing it up and just like distributing it out to everybody but the main thing for me on this weekend was charity and i wanted to think about you know how do we contribute because obviously there's a marketing that's very strong with christianity and charity but they don't own the concept and i wanted to have like a roundtable discussion on that uh before we do that though maybe we'd be good to check in in everybody else's weekends because Dread, you're looking outfitted for for like a really awesome thing. What's going on with you? Well, I uh, I'm 
I'm about 1,500 kilometers north of my residence in Fort St. John, which is oil country. Okay. So I'm, working, I'm working in the oil and gas industry right now as a as an industrial medic. So. Oh, uh, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So I go out with uh, crews to, you know, right now we're doing, uh, they're shutting off wellheads and and capping them off. So we've been uh, going, I'm shadowing uh, another fella right now. Um, Weird question. To, Was there a gas mask mandate for that role? No, um, not not in this particular case, but uh, one of the big things that we have to watch out for is hydrogen sulfide. Hmm. Um, so we do, you know, we wear uh, gas alarms and uh you know seba and all that kind of stuff has to be available for you know to provide provide that air in the event that there's some kind of a leak but uh, generally uh, you know it's not like the old days where you know it was a bunch of roughnecks on a on a rig with a it's, little uh, on the inside you know it's safety safety first and and the guys always say there's nothing so important right that you can't stop for a minute and think about what you're doing so Absolutely. that's what we're there to support so for our radio oh. listeners, I just wanted to say that uh, this is, I think, the first show that Dred's ever done on this with a clean-shaven face. So it was a magnificent beard. Moment Ooh. of silence for Dred's beard. Yes, <laughs> yes <beard>. indeed. <laughs> and, remembrance uh, of the beard. Yes. Remembrance of the beard. There's going to be a little PowerPoint presentation in memory yeah. of and then uh, we'll go right back to it. So my, my rotations are actually quite long. They, they may be one to two months at a time. Mm. Um, so... It, it may be um, I'm not here as often as I would certainly like to be, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You'll be missing. I'll, I'll be here as often mind. as I possibly can. And I'll always have my prayers in your and you know, and my thoughts for you. Thank you. And listen, if the pastor started out his food bank prayer with an invocation to the past flying spaghetti monster, not only would that be apropos, but it would actually incorporate everybody in on the on the festival rather than yeah. immediately singling out everybody who didn't immediately right. follow his particular I, I can't think of why no why anybody would not like pasta. So exactly. Yes. And never listen, if you are a Christian and you're watching this and you have a potluck and everyone else brings food to your place and you want to stop everyone from eating so you can pray to your God, don't do that. If you are in a food bank and you want to stop a line of people who are hungry to get the food that we, the other people help to prepare food for you. Don't do that. Just let them get the food. And when everyone's gone, have all the prayers you want afterwards. After you fade people, then you pray, not beforehand. Don't hold us hostage to this conversation that you're having. It's such a terrible practice. John Richards, what do you think? And how's your week been? Well, I, I wanted to ask Dredd whether he's got any souls to medic where he is now. <laughs> no, no souls. No roughnecks and no souls. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Out of five. Well, one of the things that I hate is not uh, so much at charities, but just at funerals. Uh, I mean, I've had uh, two brothers. I've gone to both parents and two brothers funerals and, and other people, of course, uh, in-laws and stuff. But the preacher will take like 10 or 15 minutes to talk about the person who is deceased. And then he'll go on with his sermon, which will last anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. They, they take advantage of the people who are there to sell their message. And that no, really makes me angry. That's insane. I've So one, yeah. I've never really been to a funeral. I've maybe been one, to one when I was went Christian and it was our pastor's mm -hmm. funeral, but yeah. I wasn't really paying attention because I was like eight years old at the time. But I yeah. did not know that funerals were, what's the right word? Preaching uh, events. Preaching events. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was more just the respect of the person. Who yeah. died. Now I have to yeah. think about like how my funeral is going to look. That's right. Well, I, I recently went to uh, Joe Barnhart's funeral. Uh, it was at a, a UU church, okay. which is not uh, nearly as religious as most churches out there. Matter of fact, it's got a secular arm or part of it. Right. And uh, they spent the entire time uh, various people coming up and talking about the relationship with the deceased. That's and so what good. a great person he was, and the experiences they had with him. It was more like a wake, yeah, than a yeah. than a, a traditional funeral. And I, I really like that. I mean, John, I think it's a good idea. John and Dredd, I don't know if you know about the Universal Universal. Was it United Universalists? But it's like an offshoot of the Methodists, uh, oh. and then are solely focused on inclusivity. And so yeah. a lot of their 
sermons are like Carl Sagan presentations, PowerPoint presentations, oh, right. mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Or right. and and if they do a Christian event, there's a, a Hindu event immediately afterwards. There's a secular event immediately afterwards. They make sure to make a point that everybody is represented in how they present. However, it's still very, very, very church like in both mm-hmm. like the songs and stand up, sit down and the tithing. Right. So it's not like Sunday assembly where it's a, it's a bit more free for all based on wherever you go. And it's only once a month. It's still very much a weekly thing. There's still very much like a, a leader pastor type figure, but it's mm-hmm. the best version of a church that I think people could Ooh. go to. Yeah. And, and, and if you are Christian, I would recommend uh, visiting one in your local area, if you can get to it. Uh mm-hmm. John Richard, okay, so taught up with you, Doubter Five. How you been yeah. since last week? Oh, I've been fine. Uh, just <laughs> keeping on, keeping on, working and playing computer games. Waiting. For yeah, spring the to, struggle. To just strong. working and playing video games <laughs> and riding your motorcycle. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a drag. Yeah. We got Dread yeah. in fire gear, being on oil rigs, and he's just like, "Yeah, I also have a hard time. Sometimes I'm playing Star Citizen, <laughs> my download rate drops below uh, 200 megabytes per millisecond. Uh, yeah. so we're uh, all the, the struggle is real, real this weekend because they dropped a major update, uh huh, wiped wiped all your progress, uh, got oh, rid of any oh, ships really? that you didn't pay actual money for. Wow, and it's so bug, it is so <laughs> buggy, it's unplayable. I mean, at the current time, I can't even get in the game." Well, that's, so that's the struggle is real. <laughs> I'm I not putting out forest fires, but you know, I am uh, 70. It, we're all out here. We're all out here. We're all out here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Larry. That wasn't a real struggle. That was a virtual struggle. <laughs> that's true. Very true. <laughs> but the, the reality is still a struggle. Okay. okay. Uh, I would like to say something about charities, though. Mm. Um, whenever I'm talking to uh, believers in the field, I, and I do you know, some tables where I t- uh, talk about atheism and religion and people always say yeah but you guys don't do any charities i mean it's all all the charities out there are religious and no they're not right um i'd like to mention some of the non-religious charities that Please. are out there amnity international is a secular charity uh friends of the earth uh doctors without borders unicef oh. yeah. uh even red cross is not that kind oh. of cross <laughs> It's yeah. a secular yeah. charity. Yeah. So uh, any any charity, Peace Corps, Peace Corps as well, also throws right in. Right. That. Yep. Right. Any charity that is not explicitly religious is a secular charity, or what you might call it an atheist charity, because they're not religious based. Right. Yeah. Because over here, of course, we don't have that many religious charities. I, I subscribe to two charities, and I have done so every month for I don't know how long—20 years, probably. One is a cancer charity named after, um, uh, what's her name, the, the female who, I can't remember. But uh, the other one is um, the United Nations Kids Charity, you know, so mm-hmm. and, and neither of them. In fact, in this country, if you nail your charity to a faith, mm. you won't earn so much. Mm. And com- coming up this very week, we have something called... Um, Red Nose Day. Is it Red Nose Day this week? Uh-huh. Or it's 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 a television, a telethon, oh. and all, all the comedians and singers get together and they put on a show that goes for about four hours. And they keep putting up pleas and saying that this is for those starving children in that part of the world, and so on and so forth. And they raise 20 millions, 30 millions in a night, and they don't mention God. Good. Because if if they did. Everybody would switch off, or pretty much everybody would switch nice. off. I'm glad yeah. that there's that culture. Like that's the stuff that needs to yeah. permeate through the rest of the world. I'd say this too. While there are definitely non-religious um charities, I think one of the scary things is those charities or the people who participate in those charities would charities wouldn't have any issues to support uh, a Christian-based charity if they needed volunteers or if they needed help. So, like me as an atheist, I have no problem going to an event. To, to feed the homeless, even if the event's run by a church, because I want to feed the homeless. But I wonder how many Christians would be willing to do the other, the other, uh, the other way around and go out yeah. of their way to leave their denomination to, to support uh, an atheist, uh, an atheist charity event. And I'm not mm. saying, I'm not saying they won't, but I'm just saying it's, it's clear that when you are a Christian organization for a church and you're helping people at your church and you're only letting people through your church newsways get out to people who are maybe helping other people who are other parts of church networks nearby, you're mm-hmm. only helping yourself at that point. And is that truly a charity anymore? 
Um, right. Is it charitable if you're just helping yourself, patting yourself? Well, there are there are liberal churches. I'll give them credit. They have preachers and pastors. They wouldn't mind visiting a, a charitable event run by an atheist. Matter or of fact, we've, or possibly for sure, especially. Um, <clears throat> but we've had uh, some preachers that have actually come to our meetups and enjoyed the conversation and camaraderie. You know, they're okay. they're not atheists, but all are welcome as long as you're there uh, for the discussion and friendly. And not so, to preach uh, I have to stick up for punch. a few of them. Okay, uh, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, well, who, me? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the reason that you have a, a different culture in the U.S. is because after World War II, you didn't do what we did, which was we, we set up a, a welfare state in 1945. And that's the whole state being charitable. We are yeah. looking after our poor, our jobless, are sick, are mm -hmm. starving, are homeless. We're not doing it as well as I'd like at the moment because yeah. we've had 13 years of right-wing rule and they are mean beggars. So at the moment, they're letting the churches sneak in. Yeah. And, and that's a, a terrible mistake because it's, it's the responsibility of the entire population to look after the feeble, vulnerable ones. Yes. Yes. And, well, and, it, yeah. it still well, is, but uh, only the only the churches are taking credit. And the thing about it is, the the right wing, same as here in America, are generally made up of evangelicals and and Christians. Why are the Christians standing in the way of of such a charitable enterprise of trying to take care of the lowest people, the people who cannot take care of themselves? That's to me the oxymoron of the of all of Christianity. Yes, they yes. they you know me mine first and right. I it, got mine. Screw you. Well, and I mean it's, it's just... tribalism at its best. Also, it's a good power play too, right? To say, hey, we are the good guys. That's the branding of Christianity. Don't worry about the yeah, fine virtue trend. signaling. Yeah, virtue signal. We are good. Don't we, you're here. You're charitable. We have a good positive impact on society. Don't worry about all this underlayer of terrible misogyny bigotry and and uh what is it what's the totem totem uh uh what man i'm gonna what's it called when one bird bird pecking what's it called when one bird the bigger bird pecks pecking, the order. pecking order pecking in order yeah. Yeah. it's just like this is your father now that's mother blah 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 and these are your mm -hmm. brothers and sisters and i decide your family and i decide how to right. what you believe in what your values are and how you raise your children and what they're gonna yeah. how they're doing their next science test dread what's up well, you know, it, it's typical of the, the sort of tautologies that uh, religions establish in order to justify themselves. They define good by the things that they do, mm. and that by virtue of the things that they do, they are good. Um, so if you're not fitting into that uh, definition, then that in itself is the how they establish the, the sort of in-group and out-group. Right. Of course, that ignores the fact that they're overlooking the things that they don't do. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, if, and you, you didn't, when you were going around at the beginning, Ty, hmm. you didn't ask me how my week was. <laughs> oh, I thought I did. I thought I did. I thought I heard something from you and I went on to John. Okay, da John Richards, how is your week? We always just assume your week is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so living in a palace like that. John Richards, I, I feel remiss if I don't ask you how your week has been. Well, I, I, I wanted to tell you that last night, hmm. Tercia and I had a chat with an ex-Amish uh, woman. Oh, that's good. Wow. The Amish, the Amish misfit. I unfortunately, imagine. unfortunately, Tercia plugged her microphone into the wrong port, and it ruined the the uh, equi the balance of her voice. Well, equi some equi something of her voice. If you ever um, needed a good lip reader, let me know. I can help you out. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. So anyway, this this um this woman, the ex the misfit Amish woman, explained what you have just been describing: how you have to be respected in your tribe in order to qualify for privileges such as you know healthcare and so on, and. That's not the way it should be. It should be the other way around. But in in the Amish religion, they don't 
go out for medical help mm. unless you're somebody who is risen up the status level in that locality and they think you're worth mm. releasing to the proper doctors it's Jeez. it's absolutely criminal it's terrible yeah. that's why i don't support out of societies and and when they have yeah. soap or apple pies or whatever it's like people are like yeah but they're really good apple pies i'm like you can get them at walmart come down come down like this yeah. is <clears throat> this is a this is a this is one a cult two a very terrible organization that's nothing but the worst place to be if you're a woman uh oh, i would say yeah, in america sure. like, i can't imagine a worse place to be a woman in america than in an amish society like that that is you can scream and nobody hears you <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> sort of situation yeah. i'm glad she got out i'm glad she got out I, that's not an easy accomplishment and, no not at and, all and we need to have a support one of the one of the like things this. that religions use mostly uh, to keep their followers in line is a bubble <clears throat> information bubble yep and yeah. with without any technology uh, the bubble is almost 100% complete in an Amish community. Yep. Uh, yeah. They have no way, you know, of finding out any kind of truth outside of the village. Not um, only, uh, just, to, just to add to that, like, but there are people who are outside of the Amish communities who are also in a bubble. And you, and you think to yourself, what's your excuse? You have the internet, you have all these other things. It's because from a formative age, while they're still understanding how basic physics work, like if I drop something, it's going to fall off the table. They were being fed this indoctrinated or this indoctrination of Jesus Christ and the story of the Bible. And here's your authority figures that you always mm. follow. And they'll accept the truths of the world along with the lies of their dogma, hand in hand with each other until they're, they become part and one and part of the same thing to the point where they're an adult and they can't parse their reality from their religion. They feel like mm. one, and, yeah. one and two the same. That's a really dangerous situation that anyone can fall into. And yeah. I think, Dredd, you hit the, the, the nail on the head by saying Christianity basically offers a simplified version of morality where it says, hey, you're virtuous by the actions that you do. And that feels like it makes sense. It feels intuitive that if I do good things, I'm a good person. And all I have to do is just keep doing good things. But like the idea of a morality system is not based on what you do. It's in fact the criteria that chooses what you do and what you don't do, right? Yeah, that is yeah. ethics in its in a nutshell. And when you sell people, oh, it's only based on what you do. It's like, great, well, I can buy you a chocolate cake. That's a good thing. Well, if I know you're allergic to chocolate, that's a bad thing. And if I keep doing it, that's an even worse thing. If I keep trying to sell you something that I know is gonna hurt you, that's a bad thing, even if the action seems like it's good. There's a context for all of my actions. And so it's more of the criteria of my actions and not the actions themselves that determine whether or not I'm doing a good thing. Well, but that's, that you. is a nuanced concept. What do you think, Dred? Absolutely, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just finishing up on uh, Kant and uh, the um, critique of uh, practical reason hmm. um, or, or pure reason, sorry. And, you know, the, so he's talking about, uh, you know, morality as, or happiness as the motivation for virtue and uh, morality. And of course, he couldn't square that against this idea that morality uh, is transcendent, right? That it is, in fact, you know, um, something beyond ourselves that we aspire to, because he believed in God, right? Sure, and sure. So sure. he was trying to justify um the sense that morality is i guess absolute hmm. um and if it's absolute then happiness can't be a motivation towards it because that would contradict it of course right right so again it's just you know religion when religion gets into morality it really it screws just it messes up. it up it messes it up <laughs> and dread i wanted to make a clarification from two weeks ago i said that negative responsibility was a Kant mention Kant did have a position on it, but I had it completely flipped around. It was the David Hume position. So thank yep. you for correcting yep. that. John Richards, hey, what, what's up? Well, you guys have just reminded me, talking about morality, of something else that happened to me this week, which is uh, an old sparring partner of mine, somebody, a Christian, who I, I first met almost 10 years ago on a radio show where we were pitted against each other in, in the debate. It was the premier Christian radio show uh, with, hosted by Justin Brearley. He's a great guy. But um, <clears throat> we've kept in touch, that old sparring partner and I, over the years. And he has gone on, he's finished his master's, he's got himself a PhD, and he's now a 
Well, he calls himself an assistant professor. I, I would say he's a you know lecturer grade one, but that's that's the dis designation that he has at this new university, which is a Christian university just set up outside Boston. Anyway, he is now teaching Christianity to students, one of whom he referred to me. Mm. He said, this student, I, I don't want him to be raised in an echo chamber. So I want him to experience an alternative worldview. Will you talk Good. to him? Good. And I did. And we had this fantastic conversation, which I was able to, uh, with his permission, I recorded because I, he was Good. there trying to he was trying to take notes. And yeah. I said, well, if I record this, I'll send you the file and you can view it anytime you like and take the notes as slowly as you wish. And subsequently, I asked him if I could use it for my channel. And he said, no. And of course, I'm sensitive to that because in his community, coming out as somebody questioning like he was, Right. Could really could really upset some apple cars. It's right. possible that he will become shunned. He might his marriage might break up. He right. could lose his children. Yeah. So of course I'm I'm I don't want to do that to him. So what I've done is I've invited Dread. Where is he? Uh that that side. No, that's uh that which, which side are you, Dredd? It's okay, I'm, it's I'm, okay. It's all right. It's okay. different for everybody. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, Dredd, as an actor, has kindly agreed to play him. Nice. So that, so that we can have, he will be completely anonymized, no name, no face, no voice, no background. And thanks to Dredd, we can use this material, and it's fantastic. Sounds great. Okay, guys, we've got to get ready for a break, though. Uh, I did want to make a point before we head out. It's the idea that Christian charities and secular charities, we're all helping the same person. So like the more we put ourselves against each other, the more we all lose because we're not helping the people that should be our own safety blanket and the yeah. people in our community. If we can help everybody, the rising tide lifts all boats, basically. So like we got to be willing to be charitable without the labels, in my opinion. And what better label to get rid of or to not focus so much on is, is I want to help you for my God. So everybody stop being charitable and let me pray for a bit. It's like, no, let's just be charitable. Let's be charitable. Let's make charities charitable, period. Larry, feel free to take us out. We'll come right back in. I want to get into information bubbles when we get back, though. Oh, uh, Larry's on mute. There this go. is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, and welcome back to the digital second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year and have over 1,000 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables, or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom Ask a meeting. And if you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You'll find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to a meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start Start one. one. Right. Well, I'm back. Where do you want to pick up? I want to talk about information bubbles real quick before uh, we head out on this show. Um, I had an interesting conversation when I was out to play disc golf earlier this week or earlier last week. And I have a friend named Joel. Joel's very Christian. As he, uh, it's, it's just what it is. You meet a lot of him when you, you meet people in Tennessee. But he's very uh evangelical with his approach because no matter what conversation you start with he will always turn it into a conversation about why god is amazing and cool oh, and the best god great. Mm -hmm. and so i was telling him hey i'm learning sign language i'm actually like invested in these live classes on the weekend where i you know talk with i i go out with uh, a couple of deaf people and we go and eat some food and we can only sign there's no talking and it's really good way to just work on conversation and he's like i have a favorite language and it's ancient hebrew and i'm <laughs> learning ancient hebrew because 
it really makes me realize that the Bible is translated perfectly from ancient Hebrew to English. And if you look at every letter in ancient Hebrew <laughs> language, you can see that each one means something related to God. A is the, it looks like a bull's head. And if you look at a bull's head, you realize that means father. And what is ancient Hebrew? It means Abba and Abba's father. And he's just going off and on and on. I'm like, you know, if we're talking about like, languages that we're learning i'm glad you're learning a language that's cool let's talk maybe some other languages like no 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 i really want to focus on this ancient hebrew why, why it's so good with god and i'm like yeah. is there any reason why <laughs> as like is ancient hebrew your favorite language and he says yes it's absolutely and i said isn't it weird that like it's if if it wasn't so tied to christianity maybe it wouldn't be your favorite language because i know for a fact this guy doesn't speak ancient hebrew he's as white as the sun is bright like <laughs> there's not no in a bad way but like it just is what it is and he said well tyrone uh isn't that a little biased for you to say or actually there's no bias for you to say that because uh as you can see i'm talking about a, a, a language that has transcended what human knowledge was able to know about during that period of time and before he could start his preaching i just <laughs> wanted to remind him one joel you 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 have a christian name you you have christian parents who named you a christian name you are a guy in the South, in America, which is predominantly Christian, particularly in this area. If we're talking about bias, you have to at least be aware that you have some. You have to at least be aware, but aware of that. And he said, no, there's no way I'm biased. I'm, that's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm like, <laughs> listen, there's nothing wrong with bias. This is the last part of the story. I'm sorry. There's nothing wrong with bias. Like my clock is biased to telling me the right time. You can be biased and still be right. But at least you should recognize what the bias is. Like you should at least recognize you have a tool to at least know what if you're being biased or not being biased. He's like, I'm not biased. And that was the end of the conversation. We just went back to playing disc golf. But yeah, it yeah. still bothers me in my head. That anyway, John Richards, do you have comments on stories like that? Because people are yeah. in information bubbles and I I want I'm worried yeah. for them. My heart well, I want to take your I want to take your Joel story. I assume it's not Joel Osteen, your friend. No, of course not. <laughs> mm -hmm. He didn't fly us in his private jet to the disc golf course. <laughs> yeah. okay. But uh, because we have that daily here, we have a little slot on Radio 4, mm. which is called um, Thought for the Day. And it's, it's always how a priest can take an item of news mm. and begin and you're sort of interested because it's you know it's just happened and then he can gradually morph it into jesus in the case oh, of yeah. course five minutes so but the other thing i wanted you to tell to joel is ancient hebrew is a jewish language not a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah. in fact it's in fact it's called aramaic it's not ancient uh, Jewish. yeah they They're didn't call it hebrew, ancient hebrew it's so no. it's aramaic. <laughs> and of course uh greek was also a um a prominent language that uh, many of the texts were written yeah. in so. Yeah, it's you funny know that atheists know that, but they don't. It's true. I did bring up like, hey, I love Greek numerals if we're talking about old languages. And he was like, I don't I don't know anything about that, but I do know ancient Hebrew. I was just like, you know, the numerals like, no, 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 I don't know anything. Let's go back to ancient Hebrews. There's a point I want to make. I'm just like, OK, this is a weird conversation, but it is it is typical. It is the typical Joel conversation. Yeah, if Christianity had a language, it would be Roman, you would think. Or Latin. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was just where it was created. Yeah. Absolutely. You, and I, I, the thing is, I also brought that up too. I was like, how the Roman numerals make sense where you have one for one, two for two, three for three. That's very clear. Like you can look at that and easily understand it. Chinese has the same thing too, where it's one stroke for one, two for two, three for two. Like, aren't those better structured languages in the terms of, in, if we're to build a criteria based on what's the best language, based on just ease of understanding and like simplicity? Doesn't that like get on your criteria? It's like that criteria doesn't count because it doesn't have anything to do with my God belief. And I and I in my mind, it was it was just such a, a biased statement to make. And I told him about the bias, and he's like, Well, you see, Ty, I'm a presuppositionalist. <laughs> like, how, how does that make yeah. your argument any stronger if you're just assuming no. you're right from the beginning? Like, don't you know that that's yeah. the red flag to let you yes, know? Yes, we, we use that against you. We I use just that against both. you. Yeah, can you imagine any physicist or scientist saying I'm a presuppositionalist? <laughs> you know, I'm right, you're wrong, there's no way you can change my mind. Yeah. Can I just point out that the Arabic numbers are also the same in that they're easy to count because a one is one stroke, a two is two strokes, yes. a three is three strokes. Exactly. And we all, and we just uh, Anglicanized them over a period of time, mm. believe it. I mm. love it. 
So in my mind, I wanted to, so the idea is he wears his information bubble, his complete bubble, like a feather in his hat, like a belt, like it's a thing that he's proud of because he lives in a culture, a miniature culture that endorses yeah. that. And mm. that's the scary thing. Like we can point out bias, we can point out information bubbles, but there are some people who, who, who see that as a good thing. And I yeah. feel like that wagging the dog tail wagging the dog sort of like backwards understanding of the universe makes it yeah. very very difficult to get through to certain people or they see it as a no thing it's like believing that everybody else has an accent except you oh that's interesting well, could you could yeah. you elaborate on that well <laughs> if everybody's different except for me then i'm okay is that what you're saying no i'm, I'm saying that everybody has an accent Right. Uh, you, you, would, you would say that I, I speak with an English accent. Correct. But from where I'm coming <laughs> from, I, I speak without an accent, and uh -huh. you guys have all got accents. You speak with an American accent. Yes. Right, right, exactly. right, 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 right. Very true. Yeah. I mean, if anything, it just the 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 salve of Christianity is to like reduce uncertainty in your life. You know, you'll know what happens after you die. You have understanding what good and and not good or evil is. Uh, you know how to judge people accurately because your best friend's the creator of the entire universe. And the things that you love are the things that that being loves. And the things that you hate are the things that that being hates. And it gives you a lot of comfort. But it also, in my mind, improperly sets you up for interacting with people who have any sort of different cultural aspects or or. Uh, any sort of different philosophy to the point where you can't even talk on the same level. And when it's as clear as maybe you don't know this thing as well as you think you do, it's, it, 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 it just starts to cause the, the, the brains to start smoking and being like, well, there's just something wrong. Something's wrong, but it can't be me. It has to be you. It has to always be you. And I can see that going off in Joel's mind sometimes, but I don't like pushing at it because I don't, I'm not in the career of making people feel un uncomfortable or upset anymore or, or anything like that. Uh, but I do, I appreciate his friendship, but I also worry for him as just like another person being charitable in the mindset of other people that there are a lot of people in his same condition that don't have access to information or have access to information, but are unwilling to educate themselves on these certain aspects, but yet they have a power to, to keep me from being able to freely express myself or control what school systems learn or what politicians get into office. And I just feel like that imbalance is very concerning for me. Um, Larry, I'd like to get your feedback on something. Do you, your, your pastor friend who you brought over to, uh, the Barley's tap rooms and pizzerias, when you've had conversations with them, do you ever her. feel like he was her? Do you ever feel mm -hmm. like it was genuinely concern or interest in any of the points that you were making? And do you feel like one, that's something that more people should be doing or do you feel like no i think she was a very open-minded uh person i think uh she she took uh our points very well mm -hmm. uh she had she still relied on faith to keep her uh not her beliefs where they were mm -hmm. uh but she used those in a in a very liberal manner she runs a kind of a liberal church on uh i think it's broadway okay but i respect her Highly, and uh, she she's never abusive. She's never uh, condescending. Uh, a very nice person. Very happy to know her, uh, and I you know I wish her well. I hope that uh, she learns more about the religion, and I'm sure she will, and eventually makes her way to atheism. But I'm not holding my breath. Sure, it sure, could be. Sure. But she's she's a very nice person. And I have another friend who I was playing disc golf with along with Joel named Aaron, who's also Christian. This guy is homeschooled lives out in the middle of the country, whole family is Christian, they have a church set up in their home, yet knows I'm an atheist, knows I'm asexual, totally cool with me, never forces a religion on me, is willing mm -hmm. to like, like laugh about a lot of the stuff that I bring up with, supports the fact that I'm on this radio call. Uh, I, I've nearly babysitted his kid, I've been over to his farm, we've like fixed, what do you call it, fixed and and docked and and lambed sheep together. Like we we have a really good bond. And so I'm not saying that 
if you're a Christian, you're in, entirely incapable of interacting with atheists. But I do feel like there's no excuse if you can't, because <laughs> there's definitely people who can. So it's more of like a personable issue that I probably have an issue with more than the dogmatic point of view. Dread Pirate, when you have people over at your Possiferians, are they always Possiferians, or is there any curious Christians that come over too that are just interested in seeing what you're up oh, to? We, we, we call the Pasta Curious. Um, so yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, you know, people come to see what it's all about, and um, there's there's never any pressure. Uh, you know, they don't. You know, usually when like uh, if we're having a meal, I'll I'll give the benediction, but we do it. Uh, we repeat you know short lines of it after the, so the crew would repeat it after me nice um and, but that's it's a matter of choice whether or not you want to or not and and, and some people participate just because uh you know it's something so different that they you know they want to just to say that they did <laughs> you know what i mean so mm -hmm. sure i get you i get you john richards what can we do as americans to get outside of our information bubble travel I like it. Easy as that. Uh, th this person, this misfit Amish we were speaking to last night, joined the, joined the military. I think she was in the Navy and she w went to see the world. And of course, in fact, that's the last, what happened to the last two of our guests on Free Thought Hour. They were both in the military. And when you do that, you get to see that other countries have other gods. <laughs> there isn't just mine and that's correct it's the only true one right. there's, there's more people in the world that believe in other gods than the people who believe in yours right. and that's a wonderful mind opening experience it is the worst the worst thing i could tell you about um when i was in i visited chicago about what uh, 15 years ago M no more about 20 years ago and during that visit, we went to see somebody who, who lived in a, a little town to the south of Chicago. And we said we were on the way to um, St. Louis, I think it was. And she said, I've never been there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she, she just potted around in her little village. And that was it. No experience, very parochial, very narrow minded no encountering other people <clears throat> and that's what gives you this tendency to think you're right and the rest are wrong and it's otherness it's tribalism it's horrible yeah yeah but I, I was going to say that you know with respect to pacifary i like uh, i i told you i'm shadowing a fella who um isn't you know hasn't been really forthcoming about being a christian but just the conversation leads me to <clears throat> to believe that he is uh, so yesterday I introduced him to the whole idea of Pastafarianism as, uh, you know, sort of one of those outsider tests of faith, you know, like if you can look at my belief system and say, well, that's absolutely absurd. There's no way you can possibly believe in that. Right. I simply turn it around and say, well, you know, consider the other belief systems out there yeah. and, you know, think about Muhammad going to heaven on a winged horse. Right. How many of those have you seen? How many talking snakes have you seen? How many how many virgin births have you well, seen? Jesus so, just flew up to heaven. I mean, bodily like Superman. Well, he's still he's yeah. still on the way to heaven right now. He's got maybe yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah, it's it's the sky hook. Ago. He was lifted by the sky hook, right? Yeah. <laughs> or by his own bootstraps. Uh, <laughs> I, I, did, I, I did want to bring out the the outsider test of faith, test of faith, very good uh mechanism to understand what your criteria is. To, to disregard certain religions but it, yeah. it's a lost opportunity if you don't understand what that criteria is and apply it to every other religion yes. that's out there or even the ones that you currently believe in so it's not just oh they believe in pasta that's silly so it's like oh so you're saying it's weird to believe in inanimate objects or no 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 just like talking things that don't normally talk that don't exist in nature that's uh -huh. silly like i don't believe snakes in and donkeys like, okay okay yeah. so like if, if that's the criteria let's look at christianity it's like are yeah. you using the same rule that's or are you using a double standard and, and, and that's and that's it right it's a it's a chance to see where your standard for your own beliefs right. sits in relation to the standard you apply right to others right yeah and if and, they're uneven 
Well, then, right there, you've, you've yeah. clearly demonstrated. Yeah. To they need to learn about the outsider test for faith. Yeah. Right. And the sad thing is, I have, I work with a bunch of scientists. Some of them are religious as well. And while they're well meaning, they are more than open to tell you that they operate on a double standard. They'll, and I'll say, like, hey, it sounds like you're operating on a double standard. They're like, of course, because there's a standard for science and then there's a standard for the spirit and spirit <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why are you operating on a double standard? And I'll say double right. standard over and over again. They'll be like, no, 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 no. It's two different standards, Ty. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> They're pushing Stephen Jay Gould's uh, yeah. non overlapping yeah. magisteria. Yeah. 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 Can, I, can I have a pound of that spirit they're talking about, please? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, I I can't, I can't, it, it, it hurts me because I, I guess I take this a little personally because I was in that same position maybe about 14 years back. Like, Larry, before I went over to Knoxville and we met each other, I would say like five years before that, I was a Christian going through my transition to like realize oh maybe i'm uh -huh. not as christian maybe i'm just not religious maybe well i'm not an atheist i'm not the a word but i'm just mm -hmm. <laughs> okay i understand what atheists are dang it am i one too dang it i am no okay well let me figure this out what's the wrong do i like eating babies is baby blood <laughs> oh i guess it's not that bad actually this is a really good i need to tell everybody i'm an atheist why aren't you an atheist too yeah. that's, that's okay i'm calming down i'm calming down i'm learning how to talk to people everything's good and then i met larry's group and i went through that whole thing and now i was just this yeah. pleasant like atheist guy that like everyone liked talking to because i went through that i went through it, I went through it. Mm -hmm. yeah but I feel like yeah. everyone, I don't feel like everyone yeah. went through it because John Richards, you never had to go through that. But there's a lot right. of anger that comes as you buck yeah, up yeah. You God's yeah. that everyone believes in. Yeah. Since I was well, you've been lied to all your life. Exactly. That's angering. That's, like, uh, yeah. yeah, like for 20 Look. years of lies, you're like, what? You've been telling yes. me about the real world every day. Like, tell you're not ready for the real world. And then you tell me, you're not ready for the real world. You can't do this in the real world. And now I'm in the real world and tell me half these people believe in imaginary friends still. Like, that's mm -hmm. so upsetting. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell me mm -hmm. how many babies did you have to eat before you became an atheist? <laughs> Thankfully, less than one. <laughs> <laughs> and all the babies that you wanted to eat. <laughs> right, 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 right. I did some noms on my baby sister's cheeks. Yeah. That's about now, talking it. about being angry. Have you ever read uh, Greta? Oh, uh, what's her last name? Uh, Greta not Thurberg. Thurberg. No, not her. Uh, there's a different Greta, but she wrote a, an article called 50 Reasons Why Atheists Are Angry and mm -hmm. Have Every Right to Be. Right, right. It's, <laughs> it's a very good article if you can find it. She's actually expanded it into a book, 99 Reasons, uh, but I'll have to look up her name and give it to you in a minute here. I'd also say this too. Uh, John, you made the point where you have a guy who's a Christian who's afraid to, to even say that he's questioning because out of fear of losing his job, losing his social group, losing his wife, maybe losing his kids. That yeah. is, there are some considerable hooks that come yeah. with believing this dogma to the point where, and I, and I want to make this clear because John, you would agree with me on this definition. There's a point where you know that you don't believe in a God, yet you can't express it out of fear of losing these things that you're holding on to. Yeah, yeah, you've got to go and about pretending in the closet. Right. I've had friends who are worth me, scientists at work who were Muslim, who were not Muslim, who are very much atheists. And when I had a conversation with them, it's like, I don't believe any of this either. Sometimes I just sit on my kitchen and just push my head against the, the floor just so I had this little bruise to show that I've been praying so everybody else who looks at me can know that I'm a Muslim. Yeah. And I'm so glad to not be in those countries anymore. And I just can't imagine going back and then they had to go back and it broke my heart because that was a oh, no. opportunity for their family. Yeah. But they can't express that unless it's behind closed doors with other people who are like mine right. very sad uh, a lot of, of atheists so that way i mean uh, if you're if you were raised in a christian family if you were raised in a christian community and you're not a, a christian anymore yeah uh, it's well, not easy to come out a lot of times people hide it i hid well, my atheism for 30 years I, I can i can i can identify by the way that greta is greta christina so uh, check out her article. I posted a link here locally. Uh, oh, okay. about, uh, do it. I'll put it in the Google comments. Google Greta Christina and angry atheist and you'll find her. Why are you so angry? And every right to be. And it's also good to have some ownership of your anger because that's the way how you can address it. 
grow past it and move forward because there are a lot of bitter atheists for sure and still are honestly well, indeed it, it's the ex-christians or the ex-muslims there it is who are the most true. militant yeah I, i'm yeah. not very militant because i've right. never i haven't got anything to be cross about you know right i was right. never inducted i didn't have you to mean, deconstruct besides the like, hijacking hey, I was born of your this way what's your country? problem <laughs> <laughs> In, interestingly on that subject mm. we, we are undergoing a, a self consultation at the moment okay we've got people who are questioning whether we should be um we should have an established church even the archbishop of canterbury himself has is questioning the establishment of anglicanism so wow it's all happening, and I, I want to tell you, perhaps when we come round to, uh, you know, the end of the show, what's going on here. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. So, hey, how about that? We are getting close to the end of the show. Let's do <laughs> some roundups. You can find my stuff on Let's Chat. Guys, I enjoy talking to you every week. Dread Pirate, feel free to come in whenever you can. Uh, hope you have a safe outing on your mm -hmm. oil rigs. Where can we yeah. find your stuff at, my friend? Uh, well, you can find me on YouTube at Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. I uh, live stream this when I'm available, uh, when I'm on at 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, I guess is what it is now, um, on Sundays. And then when I'm able to join uh, John Richards on the, the view of the news, I do that at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. I won't be there, John. Sorry this morning, but. Uh, uh, once I get my own unit, I should be able to, uh, uh, you know, have my own setup because I'll be uh, assigned a uh, a field medic truck, and and so it'll be mine, sort of thing. So I can set it up in my own way, and and should be able to, uh, should be available for uh, for more shows once uh, once I get settled in. Great, Good. excellent, cool. Yeah. John Richards, where can we find your stuff at? Free Thought Channel. That's where most of my stuff is available. But I want to tell you about the forthcoming Atheist Convention, which is on June the 4th. It's a Sunday, and it's in London, in the venue in London. And what we're going to do, it, it, we have some star celebrities who are speaking, uh, including Lawrence Krauss. And what we're going to do is have a, an event followed by a dinner and I, I will be auctioning the painting of Christopher Hitchens and we might make a presentation an honor to Richard Dawkins and so on and so forth cool. it's going to be great nice yeah, awesome sounds fun hey, very cool uh, uh five feel free to take us out well, what about you? What, where can we find your stuff? Oh, I said my stuff was at Les Chat, and there's my cat. He's just waiting. Oh, for is that it? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and other articles on the subject of atheism. You can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. And my YouTube channel handle is at Doubter5. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Everybody. bye, -bye. All right.